What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build. Today, we're going to be exploring the idea of becoming an actual tank in Destiny with the use of Air Apparent as our main weaponry and Iceful Mantle for that extra defence. Although quite common and popular, the setup allows the user to take on a wide number of damage before their shields go down, while allowing the user to mow down everyone and everything within the 200 magazine feed that we currently have. An absolute powerhouse case all, this build is truly the epiphany of a heavy tank player who wants nothing more than to shoot pure lead, akin to Legion from Titanfall 2. Now while air and icefall are the main core of the build, I have added in some features akin to the two exotics that will allow you to carry on spraying and praying even when one or both exotics aren't available. We do also have the Rasputin mod, Protective Light, and finally Code of the Seed Breaker subclass to tie everything up in a neat pile. Officially, the build is more of a Gundam than a tank, but either way you look at it, you're something that a lot of enemies, or players, will fear if they ever come across you. And that's why today's video will be a fun one, if you're looking to shred things up. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like and a sub, as it really does help me out. Starting with the subclass, we will be using Code of the Siegebreaker for the active use of Sol Invictus and Sun Warrior, both that will be very important for the health and usage of the build. The chosen use of the build is designed around the idea of constantly moving and needing to adapt to enemy changes in each and every area you are in. While we have air apparent active, we can stay in one place and soak up a ton of damage, or we can stay constantly on the move since our shields are practically indestructible. However, one leading issue with this is that we won't constantly have air apparent all the time, especially when we run out of ammo. With the use of Sun Victors and Sun Warrior, not only can we add a bit of extra protection to the setup, but it will provide extra damage, faster ability regeneration, and leaves active sunspots which will benefit us for a long time. The faster ability regeneration will come in handy when we are completely surrounded, as we can use them to break up fights and provide breathing room from us to the enemy. At the same time, we're also using Warmind Cell mods for the extra kick on AoE. The most important part of the subclass is the Sunspots produce, as we can use them freely and have a constant supply of buffs being active for us. As mentioned earlier, while we do get ability buffs, we do also have the ability to proc them on kills, which will lead us to the point of moving about freely while the Sunspots either provide us extra protection or outright kill those who walk into them. On top of that, you're also receiving a 20% weapon buff for a few seconds, so you're pretty much covered for protection and damage wherever you go. This subclass is best for those who want to actively suppress enemies from moving forward by throwing everything you've got at them which suits the style of the build. This can be further supported the moment you use your super, which you can endlessly throw at a target and watch them stack up from the sheer damage they build up. You can then follow up with your other weapons and the flow of damage is quite impressive even when your heavy isn't in use. Overall, make full use of the sunspots as their benefits are greatly worked for. For weapons, as we have a main idea as to what we're aiming for, the next setup is to replicate the heavy weapon design and exotic trait in case we get into a situation to where we can't use it at all. For this, I have a very simple setup that you can easily farm with the near same weapons I have, or not. Either way, you'll still have something similar at the end of it. My primary for example is the Chroma Rush AR with Accurize Rams, Subscience and Rampage, with the main perk Subscience being the main perk that follows what Air Apparent does. With the perk, I can keep firing at a minor to major enemy for however long as I can, as long as I get a kill with said perk active. This combined with Rampage pretty much means I'll have a constantly active damage buff at all times. Now, although a shield won't pop up for us, we can use Iceful Mantle instead if we are happy to sacrifice running and jumping for a few seconds. However, Iceful Mantle, while keeping us shielded, can last just as long as we like as long as we get a back to back kill with our weapon. From testing, Iceful Mantle's timer will refresh by a few seconds every time we get a kill with said weapon. Until it's destroyed, our overshield can remain for an entire fight, which is great when you delve into our harder content. With substance attached to the build, it only makes the setup even more better and near identical to what Air offers. If you don't have Chroma Rush with a the perk, then don't worry, as False Promise, Tiger Sprite, and Hung Jury are great alternatives. For a secondary, I'm using the Empty Vessel Grenade Launcher with Ambitious Assassin and Demolitionist. I plan to use the weapon to produce warm mind cells and actively keep my grenade regeneration rate as an actively high level as possible. Like I mentioned earlier, using Sunspots can be a lifesaver for many players as it can keep you alive for longer 
while enhancing your ability regen as you go. As I only have the main basics of Discipline Monster Attach, it was going to be very important for me to keep my grenades afloat since they are the most easiest to use and abuse. At the same time, this will come in handy for keeping our super energy also relatively high since the Bulwark mod will require some super energy as sacrifice. For this I have the Ashes to Ashes mod that will grant me super energy and thus allow me to heavily use the mod when it's needed most. Now although wall cells are relatively easy to proc via other means, you can opt out and use other grenade launchers instead if they provide better benefits such as the Salvager's Salvo, but do make sure they have the Demolitions perk attached or at least cover the area that is lost. For Heavy we have the Air Apparent that is fully masterwork and this extra addition is very important for surviving continuous fights on all floors. While the base version of the weapon is still good, the Masterwork variant is better as Legion's Bulwark improves the power of Air Apparent's Arc Shield and partially reloads your magazine whenever the shield breaks. The Bulwark when active becomes indestructible and an absolute pain to face against if you ever played one in PvP. In PvE, it's just crazy good for allowing you to survive longer than normal and allow you to go ahead first into the fray and just go to town with everyone and everything there even when surrounded. When you add in sunspots, warmind cells and the extra overseals, you practically become a raid boss yourself. For the stats, the three key areas of focus will be resilience, discipline and intellect, which will all play a part in supporting the build from start to finish. Now there are a few mods we do have that will benefit the build, but with the way the build is designed it's fairly flexible in terms of buffs that will greatly benefit you whenever you're ready. Taking a look at resilience for starters, this area will play into how often we can get Iceborne Mantle to quickly recover after its use, which is important if you plan to use it for long periods. Now I haven't got any mods further supporting the recovery speed for this area, as at 70 this is literally enough for you to fully recover. At the same time playing normally and getting kills will also drastically increase the speed of the recovery area. This area to be honest really doesn't need any more mods because of how generous the recovery speed is at the current moment when it hits at 70. If you want faster then by all means slot some more mods into this area or increase it to 100, but 70 for the time being is quite good. Our discipline is the same as well, though it will be linked back into an intellect area. At 60 to even 50, this is more than enough for a passive regen since we have sunspots available that will actively regen our abilities quickly and we have our secondary with the demolitions perk that can also help us out in a pinch. From here we should be able to use our grenades non-stop and actively activate the ashes to ashes mod that will grant us energy to our super and then the warm and cell mods for even more destructive capabilities. Then lastly we have intellect which like I mentioned earlier will link back into our usage of the grenades. At 60 as well this should be enough to support you as long as you use the bulwark mod sparingly while balancing out the usage of grenades. This area can be increased though to higher if you plan to use the Borg mod back to back and even so I would advise you to use the Frontal Wisdom mod for a steady regen of super energy when you collect elemental wells. This here will allow you to stay on top of all times and not need to sacrifice specific mods that may cost more for little benefits. From here we only have mods that are actively triggered the moment we hit their conditions which will be constantly. Protective Light for example will activate the moment we collect an orb of power and reach critical health. With all the protection mods and gear, it's always wise to have such a mod when things don't go as planned which can be an issue when using Iceborne Mantle and its negative effects. Warmind Cells are just Warmind Cells and they don't require much thought or planning unless you plan to use them to a higher degree. Now as we have covered the main topics of what makes the setup, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For head we have discipline, ashes to assets, machine gun ammo finder and protective light mod. Arm we have unstoppable grenade launcher, anti-barrier auto rifle and hammer of the war mine mod. Chest we have recovery mod, concussive dampener times 2 and last of Asputum mod. A leg we have minor recovery, machine gun scavenger times 2 and global reach mod. Mark we have minor discipline, bulwark finisher, sundering blast and taking charge mod. So what is there to know about the build? Well you have a ton of defense that can be used for end game content with ease and then you have a ton of firepower to support your endeavors which can be buffed and extended how you like. The sheer power that the build holds is truly something worth investing in if you're looking for a maximum carnage while on the go. Air apparent and ice formanta when combined allows users to become unstoppable 
and very hard to take out no matter what is shot at you. Rockets, bullets, lasers, you name it, nothing will get through that defense of yours. It's kind of sad to see enemies try their utmost best to take you out, knowing they have no chance. With how strong the build is, you can use this up to master level content as the defensive options will all come in handy and thus protect you from an early grave, while the damage is good and enough for you to take on bosses and ultras alike. Such mods like Protective Light and Bulwark are both easy to activate and can allow the user to survive certain damage before death, which I have found 90% of my times I have survived around having 1 HP left and still managed to get out of the situation alive. We then also have the Warmind Cells mod, which are customizable to the user if you want more added effects for the build. A prime example is adding in more damage for your weapons via the Power of Rasputin mod, or perhaps reduce damage incoming via Warmind Protection. With this build, the options are endless. Even when you run out of heavy ammo, you can still rein in the core of the build and wreak havoc thanks to the subsequent perk with Rampage. This, on top of Iceful Mantle and other mods, allows us to make a persuaded version of the air apparent, and in many ways, could allow us to free ourselves from air in total and still be keen to his playstyle. That's just a thought though, sticking with air will still offer you the best of both worlds. Although it works as intended, the build does have a downside to it, and that comes from Iceful Mantle, which many of you are already aware of. Although Iceful offers us a lot of protection and can be refreshed upon kills, the fact that you briefly lose your jump and run ability can also work against you even when fully protected. One scenario is you being completely surrounded and running low on heavy ammo. Yes, you could take on the damage well, but it will only be a matter of time before you run out of ammo and they get through your shields. Depending on where you are, you may be able to get out of that moment your shields are down or you may be cut down in the process. Either way, the outcome will still be bad until you recover. Luckily, we have the Bulwark mod and Protective Light mod that will grant you enough shields to survive longer, but sometimes even this won't be enough. We do also have the fact that you can run out of heavy ammo in a matter of seconds if you hastily use them too much. In general, the build is like a hog. It will keep eating and eating away and unless you stay on your toes and provide the necessary items it requires. I don't expect this build to be outright amazing everything that Destiny has to offer but it really is a superb setup for those who want to be laid back and have some dumb but truly memorable moments. The idea of becoming a sort of super soldier with heavy shields and a very big gun reminds me of a lot of sci-fi movies with their big menacing threats that go out to clean out areas with pure prejudice. I think that's what Destiny needs more of, more reason to use heavy weapons with lore and stories baked into them, as the game generally has room to show it. Bungie just needs to give us more weapons like the air apparent for us to truly achieve that. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.